for this tool, I'm going to show how to use the parametric analysis tool to um, run different analyses on a baseline model and also to um, extract some um, hourly simulation results. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to um, make a new project and we're just going to say that this is the test video project. So the new project asks you to save in a folder. So I'm going to go ahead and save it in um, one of my folders. You can save this any. You can make a folder anywhere, really. Um, so, it, so it doesn't really matter where you put it, um, just as long as it, it's going to save everything in a, in that folder. A bunch of different results. And then you need to select your baseline model. So the baseline model is a model like a baseline of your building to um, basically compare with any changes that you're going to make to the building. So um, I actually want to go in here. I'm going to choose this one as my baseline model. So it takes a little bit to open up the baseline model. And so basically what you're going to do is open up the baseline model. And so now that our baseline model came through, we're actually going to um, create some measures here. And all the measures are going to do basically is modify this baseline model in order to compare it, the energy use of, to the baseline model. So we can find these measures on the building component library. I'm actually going to um, do two different measures here. The first thing I'm going to do is an envelope measure. And I'm going to do the set R values of insulation for exterior walls to a specific value. So this just allows you to change the R values of all the exterior walls, which is really nice. So I already downloaded this, but if you haven't, you would click here and click download. And it would download this measure into your um, um, parametric analysis tool. The next thing um, I want to do is a whole building measure. And this is actually on page two of the whole building measures. I want to do change building location. So I want to click the box here to change the building location. And again, I would do download. So I have both of those measures already, already built in here. So let's go to envelope. And here's the increase R value. Now, I want to put this on the top one because you can see this new measure group is one measure from this group can be applied to each design alternative. Here, this measure is applied to the baseline. I don't want to apply this to the baseline. I just want to do it to a design alternative. So let's go up there. So this is our um, increase R value. And I'm going to actually do a, this as the change R value of exterior walls group. So I'm actually just going to build two of these. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to allow it both to increase and decrease the R value. So I'm going to make an R value of 1 for this one, and I'm going to change the name of this to R1, so that way I know it's an R1. And then I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to do this times 2. I'm going to do R64. So I'm just going to do a very big extreme range for this um, video. Okay, so that's one alternative or one group measure. I also want to go to my measure library and I want to do that whole building one. Um, so I want to change the building location. and I'll put that in a new measure group. So you can see right away that this is a little bit different. What happens is here when I put this up it didn't have this red flag. So this red um, triangle basically shows you that it's looking for a weather directory and a weather file name. So the first thing I want to do is go to energyplus.net slash weather and that's going to allow me to get a different weather file. So I'm just going to pick a um, random location. Let's just pick Alaska. I always like doing Alaska for some reason. Uh, there's no results, of course. So let's do um, Juneau. So we're going to do Juneau, Alaska. We're going to download that. And again, you really want to pay attention to where you save this. So sometimes this downloads directly into your downloads folder. Um, and actually, I'm going to do that, and then I'll unzip it in another place. And so you need to save it, and then you also need to unzip it to a weather folder. And I'm going to put this in a location that I'll remember it. Sometimes this can be a tedious process, so just bear with me. And I already have a weather files uh, folder in here. So I'm going to do that. And then you can sort of see that it already extra it extracted my um, the Juneau, Alaska 
weather files in here. So what I'm going to do is you can see the Juneau, Alaska weather files here. And this is the path. So I'm going to copy and paste the weather directory path. And then I also need to copy and paste which weather file I want to use. So I want to use the, um, we need the EPW file. And so if I right click and hit rename, then I have access to copy, so, so control, control C, and then paste the weather file name over here. So now you can see there's no more red because we got rid of those um, things. I'm going to rename this so I know it's Juno. Change loc to Juno. So now I have three different alternatives that I've set up. And now basically I need to tell, tell um, the parametric analysis tool which I want to use. So the first thing I'm going to do is actually I'm just going to do, I'm going to create one for each measure. So this is R1, R64, and change location to Juno. So then what I'm going to do is something a little bit different. So then I'm, what if I wanted to both change R1 and change my location to Juno? Well, I could select these two and I can create, say create one with the selected measure. Okay, so that so that way this is going to be R1 and Juno. Okay, so my next step basically is to run all of these models. And we see we have my baseline model, my R1, my R64, changing the location to Juno only, and the R1 and Juno. So let's go ahead and run this. And this may take a little while, so I'm going to wait until it's complete and then uh, come on back. All right, now that we're finished... Uh, running, we can see that we, all the jobs finished. Sometimes, you know, there might be an error or something and, and you might get an error here. The big thing was with the change location, sometimes you might get an error underneath here about um, the weather file couldn't be found. So um, just be a little bit careful that if, um, you know, if you didn't specify the path correctly, that you might get that, that error and that might be why. And it'll show up right in here. And it'll, and it'll say failed and give you like an error or two. I can't remember how many errors it gives you. Okay. Now the fun part. Now we go into the results. So here, if we, um, the baseline model gives you the energy use intensity and it gives you everything else. It gives you the peak electric demand and all, and all those type of things. The design alternatives... So if you change to R1, these are the savings, so, or the energy use intensity reduction, the reduction, the savings, the savings. So the red numbers mean that basically you're using more energy, and the black numbers mean that basically you are um, saving energy. So, and it gives you a increase or saving, or, you know, this is a, so basically how you can read this is that in the R64 only, this is a decrease of one off the energy use intensity, so it would be 129 and that's a 1% decrease. Here, the new EUI would be 139, and that's a 7% increase from where it's at. Okay, so now you have Juno, Alaska here, and then you have R1 and Juno here. So um, that's great, but there's also a couple different ways that we can view the results here. So the best thing... Um, you, there's, there's actually a bunch of different ways, but the easiest way to do this is let's say I wanted to look up my R1 in Juno. We could open the file in the Open Studio application, but then we'd have to do some things to rerun it and whatnot. All of our results are actually already stored if I click this DIR button. It brings it up in the directory. So you can see this is, the, this is where my project was saved, my, my test video project folder. And data point five is the one, two, three, four, fifth run. So data point five is the fifth run. If I go to user script and I click on report and it opened up in a new in my other on my other screen so let me show you. It's in a web browser. It opens up an HTML file with exactly the new um, summary report. And so this is really nice. I mean you can see um, you know all the different all the different files and what it's done and whatnot. Um, so it's so it's nice that it gives you all this information, and then you can also go to you know the the different HVAC load profiles and whatnot that you would need for um, these different areas, and um, 
that's great. So that gives you all the information you need for that. But then you might also need to get the hourly files that we requested. So to do that, you just go into the Energy Plus Zero folder. So now we're in Data Point 5. So again, we're in the fifth one here. We're in Data Point 5, the E plus out dot ESO, which is right here. And then you would extract the information from that the same way that we did it in um, the last tip video. So you can see that how we did that. And you can get the CSV for those files. So that's how you run um, the, the parametric analysis tool. And you can see that there's, there's a lot of stuff you can do here, um, not only with energy conservation measures, but if you have a building designed and you're, let's say you have a big box store or um, a retail outlet and you want to put it all over the country and it's the same design, you could test all those different locations to see which would perform well and which would not perform well. And you could modify um, different locations for different um, insulation values as well. The other thing that we didn't really cover that um, you can do is you can even put in how much um, these measures would cost. So for example, R64 is a good example. If we really bulked up the exterior walls, we could put in how much um, basically how much it would cost to put that in, so the capital cost increase. And then Energy Plus would calculate the utility cost savings and the simple payback and the life cycle cost savings. So it's a pretty powerful tool and gives you a lot of different um, tools at your exposure. All right, hopefully that helps. Thanks for watching.